we now need to turn our attention to the one true power in this larger Mediterranean world. It is the Phoenicians, or the people of the purple dye. And we go with Phoenicians because that is what the Greeks called them. These are the people of the Levant that will control and dominate the trade between the years, essentially 1200 and 65 BC up until the true rise of Rome. We tend to have this concept that you have the Greeks and then the, the Greeks kind of fall away and the Romans rise and then there nothing could be further from the truth. When Rome is just getting started consolidating its power on the Italian peninsula, this is the great age of the Hellenistic kingdoms in the east. This is when Alexandria is, is that its height of kind of intellectual as well as um, political influence. Vast armies are arraying against one another. Simultaneously, the true power in the west was not Rome. It was the city of Carthage. The city of Carthage didn't come from nowhere. They are simply the next incarnation, the creation of the Phoenician system that was set in place thousand years before. The great wars between Rome and Carthage are called the Punic Wars. And they are called the Punic Wars because they are simply the Roman term for Phoenician. Punic equals Phoenician. Hence, the association that Carthage are really just Phoenicians. All right, let's get to it. There's multiple ages to this. I'm sorry, we have to do a timeline. What we will see is it really begins in the Dark Age. That period book between around 1200 and 800 where all of a sudden the Mediterranean just goes dark. And I don't mean that the sun stops shining. I simply mean we have no written records for this 400 year period. This is the transition, actually, from the Bronze to the Iron Age. What we do know is that during this age, these Phoenician city-states will rise to power. They will develop their alphabet, the phonetic alphabet that the Greeks and the Romans will copy. They will develop their ship designs that will be the secret to their success and prosperity in the years to come. And they'll also be establishing colonies on Africa. You're still probably saying, okay, great, who are these people? Um, this is the coast we're talking about, right? Present-day Lebanon and Syria. This is not a unified group. It is not a people. Just as with the Greek city-states, these are independent trade cities. But you will notice they have a couple things going on. First of all, this is a mountain range that kind of hugs the coast. And there is a narrow, narrow, very fertile area of land just along the coast here, which means they have an intense protection from invading armies. Um, in fact, in order to invade these places, you have to work your way kind of down along the coast, either from the bottom or the top. Um, these cities itself will all be built on small peninsulas that reach out into the Mediterranean. Tyre itself will actually be an island. So will a couple of these others. In the mountains, they have cedar. They have these trees that are prized for shipbuilding and use throughout the Mediterranean. The, and of course, their purple dye. There is a small snail that is unique to this coast called the Murex snail. And this snail, when squeezed and processed, will produce one drop of purple dye. And it will be prized. So they have the luxury goods and the supply goods to become this trading society. And because they have limited agricultural resources, they will look to the seas for their fortune. And they do this well before we start seeing Athens or anybody else in Greece do this. What we will see is they will quickly, in, in this dark age, actually start setting up colonies all around the Mediterranean. And by colonies, they're, they're essentially trade posts to begin with, and it'll develop from there. But their influence will already be established before we see these Hellenic people, these Greeks. 
Our, our second kind of stage is after we get out of the Dark Age. This is when we start knowing a little more about these people. And truthfully, much of this comes from the Greeks who were kind of sworn enemies or at least competitors. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, we know in 800 when they emerge for at least the next 300 years to 539, they will control something like 90% of all the trade in the Mediterranean. This will be what the Greeks aspire to. The Greeks will copy everything they do during this age. In 814, the city of Carthage will be founded, a trade outpost of the rising city of Tyre. This is the real story of these people. These, these Phoenician ships, these traders. You will notice the, the bottom ship here is their warship. It looks amazingly like the Greek Byrene, um, and there's a reason for that. The Greeks copied. This is technically a Byrene, two rows of oars, um, and that was, was the Phoenicians kind of go-to. The Greeks did a trireme, which is three rows of oars, but structurally and design-wise, it, it's no different. But the real power of these people's society was not, of course, in their military. It was the power of the merchants. We believe that most of these cities were not actually run by kings as much as they were run by merchants, or at least kings working with merchants. These were not simply tied together or glued together ships. You can see this, this tenon and dow mortis style of construction, very strong ships that can take the storms and the big seas. These ships essentially began plying the Mediterranean and bringing wealth back to the Phoenicians. And yet, we forget about them. They will set up these colonies all over, and in doing so, they, some of these colonies will grow to sizes beyond their initial city-states. But now we get into another stage. We've already had this dominance of Phoenicians, but we're going to start to slowly see the rise of Greek traders and the Persian occupation. As you know, Persia will control this whole area, but the Persians were not interested in dominating over you as much as they were interested in you paying them. As long as you paid your taxes, as long as you provide forces for their necessities of war, they will let you continue. So the trade of these city-states, although under Persian rule, will be unaffected. They will continually arise, but will bring a competition with the Greeks. Remember that it is the Phoenicians who are the naval forces of the Persian Empire. So that competition is not just one of kind of economic, but it's one of actual warfare. During this time, Carthage will begin rising. From 580 to about 405, there is going to be a Corsica Wars against the Greeks. The city of Carthage will fighting its own battles against the Greeks that are completely separate from Persia for control of the Mediterranean. And we can see this most in the map of uh, colonial expansion that occurs because once the Greeks realize that this model of the Phoenicians using their style ships, using their style of setting up colonies and trade posts was the way to the future, the Greeks, again, especially Athenians, Corinthians, uh, Thebians, will emulate that and they will set up all these colonies. Again, the Carthaginians are going to be at the center of the fight over these islands of kind of Sicily and Corsica um, and Sardinia, which brings us to our last period, right? and it's the Hellenistic occupation. If we've been following along with the history, the one thing we know is that in 332, everything changes. Alexander actually conquering the Persians, and once he has done that, he will actually destroy Tyre because they will oppose him in 332 but it's the influence of the Diadochi Wars that follow from 332 to 286. This area and its wealth will be fought over by those who secede Alexander in, in the creation of the Hellenistic Kingdom. In 37 years, it'll change hand eight times, and each time these cities will be attacked. What you will see in this, this age the Phoenician city-states will become abandoned. And although they'll still be trade centers, but the true power of the Phoenicians is actually trade. And trade can be carried out from 
anywhere as long as you have the center of merchants and banking. Many of these Punic or Phoenician merchants will move to several of the western colonies. Carthage enters their golden age. Their populations will swell to 200,000, and this will put them in direct conflict with the other powers. When we play with this story of the rise of Rome, and we play with this story of the kind of dominance of Greek culture and Greek society, the one thing we have to realize is that the Phoenicians will be the underlying power and will not be until the Punic Wars, where Rome finally is able to defeat Carthage, that we see the movement to a more Latin slash Hellenistic or what we call a Greco-Roman society that starts the basis of Western civilization.